So I will continue. My name is Felix Lush. I work for Bosch uh, and there for the Chief Digital Mobility uh, Office. Um, so we have been looking at this topic of um, ontologies for, for quite some time uh, and it in, in drives really the, the topic of standardizing the, the access to the data and also the integration of the data. And this is what I will be talking about. Um, opening up the perspective um, what uh, I mean, we have talked about the the vehicle data, but there is much more. So the the operations data you see is is just the last phase where the components are installed in the vehicle that we produce at Bosch, and the vehicle is uh, sold to the customer and is uh, driven on the road, generating a lot of operations data. But there is a lot more to that which happens before in the life cycle of the product. So this applies to the vehicle, but also to all the components. Uh, which are manufactured by tier one or tier two suppliers. And it's it's absolutely necessary to, to uh, integrate the data because currently it, it is very fragmented. So every domain is storing the data in different uh, databases. You probably uh, will encounter the situation in your company as well. Um, and that's what we are looking at. And uh, the problem you, you face here is that every domain comes with different standards, with different ways how to store the data. So we are actually closing the loop to generate value out of this operations phase, meaning that we analyze the data, look at the data to improve then our manufacturing of the products or to optimize the products. So this is a, a new topic which is enabled by connectivity, of course, um, <clears throat> which has been the case for other domains. I mean, we all know that uh, every smartphone is sending data and things like that, but it's not yet in the vehicle, uh, but will be very soon. Uh, to, to enable these kind of uh, future services. So in order to drive that, uh, we cannot do this alone. So we have to partner with other companies. So we are active, for example, in the open manufacturing platform. Uh, together with BMW, um, but also with, with all the other companies you see here, to basi basically shape the standards that enable us to exchange data, manufacturing data. And there are interesting use cases which are very, um, yeah, very important nowadays. If you think about the supply chain disruption, uh, you have to know exactly where your components, which suppliers or sub-sub suppliers are providing components, things like that. Um, which got disrupted by 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 COVID or by the by the war in in Ukraine, for example. So it's 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 kind of interesting to see this happening not only in the automotive domain but also in other domains like manufacturing. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, this morning we have been talking about Catina X, which is also a, a big alliance uh, currently uh, taking place <clears throat> where the automotive manufacturers meet and also suppliers to work on uh, data standardization, data exchange, but also on uh, specific use cases like traceability is one use case, but also quality data coming from the vehicles is, a, is just another use case that we look at. Uh, and, and here again, it's, it's very important to define the, the right standards that enable then the companies to exchange uh, the data basically. But coming back uh, to VSS and VSS ontology. So if you look at the at the tech stack in the vehicle, you have then, of course, this embedded uh, domain where, the, where you have the electronic control units. This is very proprietary. So every supplier is, is doing their own things. The OEMs are integrating the embedded ECUs. Um, this has been for the last 10, 15 years the way to go. But of course, we want to open up this thing, um, first of all, in the vehicle to provide an abstraction layer, which is this common vehicle interface. <clears throat> That's uh, something uh, which we have seen where VSS uh, can play a role to, to, uh, to enable that. Um, this uh, allows you then um, to basically deploy uh, apps into the vehicle to open up uh, the system there. But it's going to be a long time until this will happen. I mean, we start to think about it, but until every uh, ECU is implemented like that, it will take just some time. So what do we do in, 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 in between? Um, there is, of course, data is uh, being sent to the cloud. Um, 
and there you have again the problem now, especially we as a tier one supplier, that we need to integrate data from all the different OEMs. And every OEM is sending data in a different format. So what do you need to do if you want to develop scalable data-driven services? You have to standardize. And we see a, a particular um, a good opportunity to use VSS, and especially the VSS ontology at, at that area, so in this off-board area, to, to standardize the data because once you have standardized it, you can then basically start developing your services and they scale uh, without having the need to basically adapt to all the different data formats coming from the different OEMs, for example. That's this data way. Uh, we are also thinking about, um, of course, uh, ways how to close the data loop, meaning that you can now use the insights being generated by the services to actually uh, change the code to do software updates in the car, but also to configure or uh, change parameters in, in the car. If you, for example, monitor an electronic control unit in the behavior of the system, um, you can uh, uh, um, give that data to an AI algorithm. The AI algorithm will, will, will do an, uh, run an uh, optimization and then you can basically, if you have um, your software um, developed in a configurable way, you can change parameters. This is, is a completely new opportunity which has not been there because in the past it has meant like the software either uh, stayed stable or was updated in a very, very infrequent cycle, like you go to a repair shop, you need to wait, your car is being connected to a system, new software is updated. Uh, this is will go uh, in a much faster way and you can do it in an online, online way in the future. So there we also need then standardization. So we have talked about, is there a way back? Um, this is not directly the, the, the topic of VSS, but of course you can use the data points to also specify the actuators uh, and then the interfaces to standardize the interfaces to basically make that happen, that you can also send then commands to the vehicle or to, your, um, or to update uh, data points in the vehicle. And we see this as this uh, lying aid. We, we, we call this because this uh, looks like a figure eight, uh, but it's like this double circle. So you do this while you are developing a system. Uh, al already in this engineering phase, we get, uh, we get data from the, from the test vehicles, from the test fleet to optimize this. And this is just extended. I mean, this has been in the past. Uh, we have been doing this. Now we go to the post SOP phase, meaning uh, that we get the data from every vehicle which is uh, has components uh, uh, from Bosch, for example. Um, so you also need to keep track of which produced instances, for example, of, of components are installed in which vehicle. So you need metadata management for all that data. You need to identify uh, the components and the vehicle instances. And that's what we call then the digital twin. Um, uh, and we are working on, on, on that topic as well. But this uh, can only work if we if we have then these uh, standards in place. So <clears throat> um, uh, Daniel has just uh, talked about this ontologies and the main advantage we see is that the ontologies provide this um, IT system independent way of linking together different data coming from no matter where. It can be streaming data coming from the vehicle. It can be an IT system in your company which provides metadata about the sold vehicles, for example, or about, uh, in our case, uh, which components have we shipped to which OEM, uh, or how is, how is the component uh, being structured, which sub-suppliers are in there, and, and all that data coming from these different systems needs to be integrated, and you need to have a common language that enables you how to do that. And the ontologies are particularly suitable for doing that uh, because the linkage of data is a first-class citizen, which is very often not the case if you think about databases, relational databases. You always have this structure. 
I'm talking about this domain, this is my data schema, but then it's limited. You, you cannot really represent all the data in, in just one central database. But the ontologies you can put later on top of that system, and this allows you basically to, uh, to have then this integration layer, very sin, uh, semantic integration layer that allows you to integrate the data. That's one uh, aspect. And the other aspect, uh, which we also heavily standardize, uh, for example, in Catena X, is this topic of, of creating digital twins in a standardized way. So everybody is talking about a digital twin, but there is very little uh, common approaches seen in, in industry currently to basically standardize the information models and also the interfaces that are necessary to uh, provide them the data in the form of a vehicle. For example, a vehicle twin, but this can be also a, a component twin or something like that. And if you take these two to technologies together because, I mean, uh, the, the digital twin, uh, we also have a definition language, a standardized definition language for that, and you can simply combine the two technologies. So you have ontologies, knowledge graphs, and digital twins, uh, which query then data from this integrated view, then you have a very powerful uh, technical base to, to realize these uh, kind of services. And just to give you an example how this could look like in the future, um, so you see here uh, components inside a car. Fortunately, uh, the, the surroundings of the car uh, cannot be seen here, but just imagine you have uh, we, we, we sell as a tier one these components to different OEMs and now we have this challenge of integrating all the data coming from, from our components. And how do we do that? We basically use this layer of standardization. So no matter how the data is being sent or transmitted uh, to us, we, we first standardize it at, at that level and we use, for example, VSS and VSS ontology before we create then the, the, the twin that basically basically um, describes uh, the, the, the vehicle in itself, uh, including all the data for all the, all the components. And if you have that as an abstraction, you can then start building your services on top, um, which could be something like remote diagnosis or lifetime optimization or road signature, you name it. It doesn't really matter because uh, all the services, they just ask the, the vehicle to in which data is available on the vehicle what can I do with that data? And then you can start building your scalable services on top. So that's basically the idea which we are following uh, at Bosch. Uh, but we, we certainly do not want to do this alone. Yeah? Um, I, I, I said that we need uh, partners uh, to do that. And uh, that's why we would like to invite everybody in this room to actively work together with us on the standards. So we have on Mondays the, the W3 VSS ontology uh, meeting where, where we just have started and, and the interest is growing. I think we started, uh, the two of us, uh, Daniel and myself, uh, then Ford joined and, and uh, I think the last meeting, Mercedes, uh, Volvo. So um, it, it's going to grow. And uh, if we can, can start from this nucleus, which we have there, and I think really VSS is great, if we can move this uh, also to the ontology level uh, together, then we can shape really the standard uh, for, for integration of data in the, in the automotive domain. Thank you. Are there questions? Yes, um, so I'm, I'm also active in this open manufacturing platform and we have just, uh, we are just about to release um, uh, an ontology for describing the manufacturing domain. 
And we also created this together. Um, it was an effort with uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, like a couple of companies like Intel and um, Teradata and things like uh, companies like that. Um, it's, it's almost ready. It just needs uh, formal approval by the OMP and then it will be released in May. Um, as well a, like a strong reason for VSSO to, to be in that community because we have the domain knowledge of, of the vehicle, no? but not of, of other domains. And that's an interesting part where the things are to get, come together and where you would need maybe a bit more expressivity like in ontologies to say how they are linked together. No? Like in, I think that that's, uh, there are a lot of standard, like materials and so on out there already for other domains and that can be leveraged as well if you, if you use it. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. I didn't want to switch the community. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, no, I just want to, no, I want to feel like, okay, like, do we have to, to, to um, de define more now, like, or, or like, like, uh, model more, like, uh, uh, that was my point, that, that, okay, we can concentrate on the vehicle domain, yes, as yes. there are other domains who are doing their part already, so yeah, that, yeah. that I wanted to say. Yeah, there, there are probably many other domains, Yep. I like the VSS domain, um, I like the tree structure and so forth. We talked about a lot of attributes that may go with uh, signals and ontologies and so forth. And I've seen examples that refer to uh, data that relates to people, you know, persons, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, have you thought about, or is there room for any security or privacy attributes in this whole structure? Sure, this can be, um, uh, that's also something which which probably needs to be mentioned, that these ontologies are quite flexible. You can mix and match. So if you say this is not enough for your use case, you want to add privacy attributes at every signal or something like that, or you are... You want to protect the data and say, okay, this is person-related data. You should not see this data point or something like that. You can come up with a with a simple ontology describing privacy attributes, and you can simply plug this in and say, okay, now VSS is, is extended by the VSS uh, or the VSS ontology is extended by VSS ontology privacy uh, extension or something like that, and you simply add to that. That's one possibility. And the second thing uh, is to to basically, if you are, uh, if um, if you want to add your own signals, it's also possible. I mean, private signals uh, which are not shared uh, in the in, in VSS, you can also do so, or you can even if you if the concepts are not enough in the ontology, and you say, yeah, in my company I have very specific signals which are not yet covered by the standard. You can subclass uh, the, the the VSS concepts or VSS ontology concepts. Let's say you have a dynamic vehicle property in VSS. SSO and the static vehicle property, but you want to say below dynamic vehicle property, I want to have maybe my special uh, vehicle property or something, then you simply subclass this and you extend it. Yeah, this is possible. Um, what to keep in mind, if it's, if it's of common interest, then we should probably bring this back together to the standard level and say, okay, uh, this probably is interesting for other companies so that the standard can then be extended and grown. Yeah. What you can do as well, like every data as well, like instantiated data has one identifier, no? And you can extend it as well, like like in, you can even physically like like uh, um, uh, store the information in different places where you have access, so that you have like like where maybe everybody can can have a unique identifier or something which doesn't relate to the person. That's maybe in in this place, like there are extension to more like address or something in other database, and you can even. Like, uh, like have it in different physical places and then link it back together from your application if you have the access rights. So, uh, it's, it's even like then on the physical level possible, like because you have unique identifiers for the, for the, for the instantiated data. Great, great. I, I was thinking of applications like you know, the right to repair or where you connect a, a manufacturer a diagnostic tool that may have more access than you know, somebody else and so on. Mm -hmm. It sounds like discovery. Yeah. And, and, um, you happen to, to use uh, VISS for the transports between vehicle and cloud. You, you have uh, in that sp standard specification uh, access control, access control model, which uh, provides uh, 
properties like uh, uh, role-based access control, and you even have uh, uh, parameters like purpose. You have to, to, to uh, the, the client to access the data. You have to uh, the client has to uh, provide a purpose, so which builds very well into the privacy models and so forth. So if, if you use that, you, you get uh, you get the framework for free. Okay, so thank you very much again. Yeah, I think we can wrap up the session. Anybody an overview what is next year? Like, I think uh, like it's in five minutes or something. And this year, somebody who keeps the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> good, good question. Yeah. <laughs>